All right, welcome back to Now or Never. It's Cavino and Rich. And our next guest fights February 29th in Texas against Jesse Vargas. Let's welcome the champ, Mikey Garcia. What's up, bro? What's up, man? Good to see you, man. Welcome to the show. By the way, how the hell are you training while everyone else is eating like crap around the holidays? It's happened uh, almost every year now. That it seems to be where I'm in training camp right around the holidays. You know, you got to make those sacrifices. You know, you got to kind of like put the food aside, stay on diet, and keep training. That's just part of the work, you know. Don't pull an Andy Ruiz, bro. Put the empanadas <laughs> down, okay? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm no, trying no. to, too. Believe me, it's tough, I know. It's Yo. tough, but it's, it's, it comes with the job, you know, so yeah. you got to be professional about it. We are coming to the end of the decade. You see a lot of people yeah, doing yeah. end-of-the-decade stuff. Sure, Can sure. you believe you started winning belts at the beginning of this decade? Yeah, I mean, uh, first belt, uh, we were talking about that. Uh, Ten was years that, ago, almost. 2011, 2010, well, it was 2010 Ten. against uh, Tomas Villa. Does it, seem, does it seem like 10 years ago? At 126 pounds. Damn. Yeah. A lot's changed Jeez. since then, man. A lot, a lot of money's been made. <laughs> a lot of success, you know, uh, so a lot, a lot more belts. Yes. A lot, world, a lot of world title belts. You know, that, that's the biggest uh, change, the biggest accomplishments. Nice. You know? Now, before we talk about you, I know you're a big Cowboys fan. What's going to happen this weekend no, against no, the no. Eagles? Come on now. No, they've been disappointing. You know, <laughs> it, it seems like they kind of gave up, and they just kind of, you know, going through, you know, the, the games, but... Every year we have the team, we have everything, and it seems like we just can't, you know, put it together. You know, we can't work together, and I mean, some are blaming coaches, some are blaming the players. It, you just never know. I mean, it's it's, it's football, I, I guess. Uh, I'm surprised with uh, uh, how well other teams have have, have been doing. Yeah. Uh, in particular, buddy of mine's favorite team, uh, Niners. I'm a Niners guy too. Niners, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, we forgive you. Well, let's talk, let's talk about the fight, <laughs> yeah, man. Let's talk about you. Uh, it's, it's your first fight on the zone, so tell yes, us about yes. that wide the zone. And are you excited about it? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. You know, we uh, we structured a good deal. Yeah. Um, we've been in conversation for over a year, a year and a half now, mm -hmm. with, with the people at the zone and Matchroom Box and Eddie Hearn. But um, it was till now that we made a deal. We struck a, a good deal for me. It's a one-off fight, but it's at the right moment, the right time. And it keeps me uh, flexible and available for exploring other options even after this fight. So it just made sense. And I, I look forward to it. I really look forward to working with this new team. And, and uh, maybe it'll be a, a long-lasting relationship that can continue to, uh, to help me in, in this next stage of my career. Mikey, what made you stay at Welterweight for this one? Well, there's a few questions that I want to answer. You know, a lot of people doubt that I have anything to do at Welterweight. That I have no business there. That I should be fighting at lower weight classes. Um, the, the questions regarding my hunger for the sport, for, for success in the sport. Um, a lot of things that I feel this fight will allow me to answer that. I think Jesse presents the, the obstacles, the challenges that I can really show. I am a true contender at Walter. I have more than what you saw in my last outing. And I'm still here in, in search of greatness and, and bigger and better fights this upcoming year. Let, let's talk about your last outing. It's been, it's been 11 months, right, since then. Uh, any regrets on that fight? What did you learn from that fight? Look, there's no regrets. You know, it, it, it happens. You know, I took on the bigger challenge and, you know, we came up short. You know, I couldn't perform. I, I felt slow. I felt sluggish and tired and mm -hmm. weak and everything went bad. But uh, it's really not how you fight. It's how you fight back. How you come back. What do you do to bounce back? And that's why we want to keep doing, you know, big fights. We chose uh, Jesse as the next opponent. So I can show my fans that we're back. That loss only made me hungry. That loss okay. only made me, uh, motivated me more and, and, and just inspired me more. And that's why I plan on big things in 2020. Some fighters crumble after their first loss. Yeah. You want to prove everyone the opposite? The opposite. You know, I was flying back with a friend of mine uh, in his uh, private plane and he's asking me, how do you feel? Like, oh no, I'm good. I, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. This is what I'm gonna do. This is how I'm gonna come back. And he's like, dude, so, this loss isn't affecting. I'm like, no. It's, it's, so, so it's then, what's the approach? You know, ment mentally and physically with training. What's the approach? Because you're going for your 40th win yeah, and man. a lot to prove in this look, division. Look, um, we we are gonna focus a little more on the speed because we are fighting at, at welterweight. I'm not ruling out the possibility of moving back down. But for this fight, it is a welterweight. But I felt like I said, I felt slow. I felt weak. So there are a few uh, things that we're gonna tweak a little bit. But um, I think this fight will allow me to show everybody that I am a true contender, even right. at 47, even at, at Walter Wade. What was uh, tougher, your first loss or first breakup 
in a relationship? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Look, ah, you know. What made you cry more? No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you right now. Honestly, um, never had a, a breakup that hurt. Just maybe I was never fully in love or fully committed. Right. So that might have helped because yeah. that, that didn't hurt. Loss, it didn't hurt as, as much as people expect because I, I, I'm driven out to, to keep going, you know. I'm not dwelling on the past. I'm not over here sitting, dwelling on what could have happened, what could have done better. You know, that I'm going to be depressed if I do that. You seem like, I'm you're, you seem like your head's in the right place, man. It, it's always been. The you way know? I see it, too, is, is you still hung in there, and you're saying you weren't even at your best. It wasn't your best night, and you really were wasn't. still competitive. It really wasn't. Right. You know, we went 12 rounds, but... You know, it, it wasn't my best night. It wasn't my best performance. I felt slow, tired, and sluggish for a lot of other reasons. But, I mean, that's just part of boxing. That's how it goes. Sometimes you don't win, and that's okay. It's, it's, like I said, it's, it's not that that's going to define you. It's how you move forward and what you do next. How do you bounce back? And that's why I chose to, to, this, to do this fight uh, February 29th. Let's talk pound for pound. Uh, Ring has Canelo. ESPN has Lomachenko. Uh, where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself a top 10 right now, or do you not pay attention to the rankings I, much? I honestly don't pay attention because everybody has an opinion and different list. Um, what matters to me is how the fans see me and that the fans show and, and show that love and support. You could be number one pound for pound by one organization, but if you go fight and you know you got 500 people cheering you, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, but that, that doesn't mean you're pound for pound for me. Well, you yeah. know, these guys are number one. Is there a guy in the top 10 that you would, want right look, now? Like, what's next after look, Vargas? I, okay, well... If, if, if I first give an opinion on pound for pound really quick, I do believe that Canelo deserves a higher uh, standing than Lomachenko. I think there's other fighters that deserve a higher standing than him. Um, now, if, if I were to choose and I'm able to get in the mix of some of these uh, fights after Jesse Vargas, if everything goes well, then I would really uh, love a fight with Manny Pacquiao. Um, so stay at welterweight. If I, if I were yeah. to be given the off opportunity to fight Manny Pacquiao, which would be at welterweight, that's the fight. Right. Other than that, I'm coming back down to 40 and explore options at 140. Which might be but Lomachenko. It might be Lomachenko. Right. He just had to move up. You know, so those, wow. that's where I was going. You know? Okay. So if, if Loma is willing to move up a little bit and I meet him at 40, I think that would be a terrific fight. That would be a great fight. Great I matchup. like it. like it. All right. Yeah. Let's go over Mikey's Boxing Awards for the year. Let's do it. For 2019. Uh, fight of the year. What is your fight of the year? Ooh. Ah, I have uh, AJ and Andy Ruiz. So uh, good. One. So good, knockdowns, surprise, it was different, it was not unexpected, it was the underdog, you know. That first Mexican heavyweight first Mexican ever. Heavyweight, that gives it, for me, you know, the, the, the award. Now, of the year. surprise of the year. I mean, it's hard to say that, Again, <laughs> right? Again. There, uh, underdog overcoming, a knockdown coming back and stopping the, the, the world champion. You know, Andy Ruiz. You know, boxer to boxer, do you reach out to a guy like that after that victory and say, yo, my man, good job? Well, I was there with him I, I, at the fight, so I walked him into the ring, and then I met him in the locker That's room. That's right. So I'm You're almost pumped up. You know, we're, we're hanging out there congratulating him. It was just terrific. Well, I hope he has a nice comeback, too, after yeah, a yeah. big loss like that. Um, let's get into boxer of the year. Boxer of the year, yeah. I, I believe that should go to Canelo. Um, he had a, a great performance and uh, became a four division champion, stopping a reigning world champion in his last fight against Kovalev. So, terrific performance, knockout, and uh, I, I think I think Canelo Canelo deserves that award. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.